There's about two weeks left in the NHL regular season, and it's time to talk about why. Every single team, yes, every single team that makes the playoffs could go all the way. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Locked On NHL Power Rankings. I am Nick Zoraris, one of the co-hosts of Locked On Flames. That is Hunter Hodes, one of the co-hosts of Locked On Penguins. How are we doing today, Hunter? You know, we're about, what, two weeks away from the Stanley Cup playoffs at this point. It's early April. The weather's starting to get warmer outside. You know that playoff hockey is right around the corner. And especially for the Penguins, this might as well be a playoff game on Thursday night against the Washington Capitals. Potentially a last hurrah for both of these teams And again, probably one of their last big games against one another. So it's the best time of year if you're a sports fan, in my opinion, or one of the best times of year. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. On today's episode, we're going to bounce around. We've got a week power rankings by division, and then we're going to touch on the teams that are currently in playoff spots. And if we have time left at the end of each segment, we can talk about the teams that are just on the outside, like Hunter's Penguins or like the Islanders, if there's time permitting at the end of the second and third segments for those teams hanging around the periphery. So looking at the power rankings, we in the Atlantic, it's Bruins, Panthers, Leafs, Lightning, Sabres, Red Wings, Senators, Canadians. In the Metro, it's Rangers, Hurricanes, Capitals, Flyers, Islanders, Penguins, Devils, Blue Jackets. In the Central, it's Stars, Avalanche, Winnipeg, Nashville, Minnesota, St. Louis, Arizona, Chicago. And then in the Pacific, it's Edmonton, Vancouver, Vegas, L.A., Seattle, Calgary, Anaheim, San Jose. I think there are a few things that are interesting to me. I think Boston over Florida is very interesting. I think I want to say Carolina, uh, excuse me, Washington over Philadelphia is interesting. Dallas over Colorado. And when we talk about their recent form, I know both are on heaters, but Colorado did beat them the last time they played Winnipeg down in third. And then in the Pacific, Edmonton being in first is also very interesting. The biggest one that I found really interesting from this is Edmonton being in first, despite being second overall in the Pacific Division. And it looks like, Nick, at this point, two weeks to go until the playoffs, we might have Edmonton Vegas in round one with Vancouver, seven points up on the Oilers right now. And please inject that series into my veins if we get Edmonton Vegas round one. But I still think Vancouver deserves to be in the top spot in the Pacific overall. I will push back a little bit with your take about Dallas. I think they deserve to be in the top spot when you look at the power rankings. They've won eight in a row. It looks like as of right now, they are going to get that top spot in the Central, which is massive for them if they're able to get it, Nick, because they'll avoid playing one of Colorado or Winnipeg because right now it would be Colorado-Winnipeg in that first round. And that's just a playoff series of death, to to be honest. you know, Whoever wins that series is going to be really hurting going into round two, and Dallas will get... I think an easier series in the first round, whether it's against Nashville or LA, but if they do play LA, I think that's an easier series for the stars overall. And I do think this is the best stars team in quite a while. I know the stars are really good last year, but I think this year's stars team is better to be honest, but I don't really have too much of a problem with that. I think in the Atlantic, you know, you, when you look at Boston, Florida, I don't fully mind Boston being over Florida. I mean, they are the hotter team. The Panthers have also lost Eight of their last 10 games, they're kind of trending down at a little bit of the wrong time. Sergei Bobrovsky has also not been playing well for the last week, week and a half. So I'm not too upset about that. I think when I look at these power rankings, most of these, for the for most part, are actually right. You know, maybe if you want to argue Tampa over Toronto with how Tampa's playing recently, I could see that. But I feel like a lot of these rankings outside of the couple that I mentioned are pretty standard for the league right now. See, this gets back to something we talk about a lot, depending on the format of the power rankings. You know, sometimes it's who's most likely to win the Stanley Cup, which team do you think is the best, or if we're ranking them 1-32, to it's different as opposed to ranking them within the division. And I think in my head, the reason I'm putting Florida ahead of Boston still is because I think Florida is the better team. I think Florida, regardless of their recent form, and you highlighted Bob hasn't been great in the last two weeks. Florida as a team, you know, they're 2-7-1 and one in their last 10. That's not great. At, at this point in the season, you, you really kind of want to be solidifying what your lineup looks like, your style of play. You kind of want to go into the playoffs with a little bit of 
juice that you don't really have to tweak anything that you're in reasonable form. And I look at that Bruins roster and they've got a couple of individual pieces. They've got the best goalie tandem in the league. I do think the goalie tandem being as good as it is, does become an issue in the postseason, kind of like last year where Olmark was injured and he was still trying to play through it because he was the starter. And by the time they went to Swayman, it was probably a little bit too late for them in that series against Florida. So that's a topic of conversation. Washington kind of surging down the stretch here. They're six, three and one in their last 10. Charlie Lindgren has been great. Ovechkin's really started to put up the goal totals. I know I was reading the feature in the athletic this morning about Ovechkin's all-star break where he had eight goals going into the all-star break. And now he's at 27. He's put up 19 goals in a month and a half, two months. So, that's a case where I think I st- I think there's an argument for putting um excuse me as I scroll back up here on the power rankings I think there's an argument for putting Flor excuse me Florida Washington ahead of Philadelphia I I think Philly probably still going to end up being the third team in the division I think they're not going to fall down to one of the wild cards because of the space they've afforded themselves but as far the as the big- down the stretch is also not particularly tough yeah i think that's the word i was looking for with that i don't think it's the penguins level where the penguins i feel like are playing playoff teams every single night but they should be able to get in i think at this point i would be surprised if philadelphia did not get in despite their recent form where they're on a five game losing streak heading into this weekend all right last topic for this first segment before we move on and then start going team by team the Rangers are at 106 points. Dallas is at 105. Boston is 103. Vancouver is 102. Carolina is at 101. All of those teams have at least 75 games played. Who do you think is going to take home the President's Trophy and the number one overall seed in their respective conference? I'm going to go New York in the East. I do think they're going to get the number one overall seed in the league, and they're going to win the President's Trophy. If we're talking about you know who gets the number one seed in In the West, Nick, I think I'm going to go Dallas at this point, the way they're humming right now. Again, I said it earlier, this is probably the best Dallas Stars team in quite some time. They're talented up front. They're really deep. They're great defensively. Ottinger is hopefully starting to figure out a little bit more in goal. I do think they're going to do enough to get that number one seed in the West. But if I had to pick right now, with how the Rangers are mostly humming throughout the season, I will take them to win the President's Trophy and win the number one overall seed. What about you? Uh, I think I'm going to agree with you. Uh, We talked about it earlier in the week. The Rangers' schedule is very favorable of their final six games. Only one of them is against a playoff team, and that's the Flyers. They've got the Islanders twice. They've got Montreal. They've got Detroit, and they've got Ottawa in there. So that's a reasonably favorable split. But for the purposes of this conversation, the Stars play Chicago. They play the Avalanche. They play the Sabres. They play the Jets, they play Seattle, and then they play the Blues. That's a little bit tougher. Vancouver has, as I scroll here, Vancouver has the Kings, the Golden Knights, the Coyotes, the Oilers, the Flames, and then the Jets. I would say Vancouver's probably got the toughest schedule of those three teams remaining, and they also have the biggest gap to close. And for the purposes of the conversation, I can pull up the Bruins' final few games as well, because they are in the mix, even though. I don't feel that strongly about them and think they're that good in all honesty. The Bruins have Carolina, Boston, Carolina, Pittsburgh, Washington, Ottawa. That's pretty tough. That's a yes. lot of that's pretty tough for the Bruins who have who are playing pretty well as of late but aren't quite they're in a rock fight and I don't know if they're in a position where they can rattle off, you know, the four. You're probably going to need to win four out of your final six games if you want to win the President's Trophy conservatively. If if they draw re- Tampa in the first round, that's a prime upset pick right there, yeah, I think. That's a reasonably good upset right there. But that will just about do it for our first segment, and we will be right back. Passion, drive, and patience. Formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. 
With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available for U.S. customers. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. So, Hunter, we are going to go by conference because it'll be a little bit more organized than the 1 through 16 we did last week. So, starting with the Rangers, who are in first place in the Eastern Conference, um, they've got the high-end star power, and they've got one of the five best goalies in the league. The recipe is pretty straightforward for them. It's just a matter of closing any real holes in their team. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you overall. I think for the Rangers, I just want their high-end talent to show up. I think Mika Zibanejad has been a ghost in a lot of their playoff games over the last couple of years. I need him to have a big run if the Rangers want to go to win a championship. And I'm going to say the same for Artemi Panarin. He's had a heart trophy caliber season. He needs to bring that level of play into the playoffs if the Rangers also want to go far. And the same for Shostorka. I mean, we all know how good he is as a goaltender. One of the three best goalies in the league. He's probably not going to be a problem. But if he is able to give them elite goaltending, they're going to be hard to beat, especially if they score the level that they've been scoring at throughout the regular season. Yeah, the Rangers are pretty well situated. They're going to get a favorable first round matchup, which should help them along as opposed to what they usually do where they have to play a six or seven game series every single round. And by the time they get to the third round, they're absolutely shot energy wise. Number two, the Bruins, Uh, the goaltending depth. Not a lot of teams can throw at a goalie as good as Olmark or Swayman, let alone both. So if you're in a real pinch where one of them is struggling, you can go to the other one and still feel reasonably good about it. Uh, And they don't have as much pressure as years past. I think those two components will help this group as opposed to last year where they had the burden of having the best regular season of all time in this current format. Low expectations, a little bit of a nobody believes in us factor, I could see it. It would be really fitting if this were the Bruins team that went all the way. They remind me a little bit of that 2018 Capitals team. And I remember the Caps had that ridiculous regular season in 2017, came up short to the Penguins. They come back the next year, Nick. They win it all. I kind of get those similar vibes from the Bruins, even though, again, they're not nearly as good this year as they were last year. One thing you also didn't mention about the Bruins, if Pasternak and Marshan turn it on, I mean, it's they're going to be really hard to beat. You know, you brought up the goaltending. One of Olmark or Swayman can give you well over average goaltending. They're going to be hard to beat. But if their two big guns turn it on and play their tails off, they're, they're going to be really hard to beat in a seven-game series. Yeah, completely agreed with you there. When Poster knocks it on, he's arguably the best left winger in hockey. Agreed. When he's on, he's right there in the conversation. Uh, number three in the East would be Carolina. Uh, their depth. They... Other than the Rangers, I think there's a strong argument Carolina is the deepest forward group in the entire NHL. And when their defense is locked in, when that Slavin and Pesci pair is going, if they need it to, that's one of the best shutdown pairs in the entire league. Gensel has fit in really well for them. Seth Jarvis is having an incredible breakout season for them. They're a very deep team. It's just the Rangers high end guys are a little bit better. That's really the only gap between these two teams. I'm still in the territory for Carolina where I want to see it to believe it. I mean, I want to see if they can go on a deep run, but you kind of took a little bit of my point, you know, overall where, you know, they can stifle teams defensively. They are one of the better defensive teams in the league. When Rod Brindamore's system is in full effect, they are shutting teams down in their own zone and not allowing really any high danger chances overall. If they want to go on a deep run, they need to do that on a nightly basis in the playoffs. And then you also said Jake Gensel. He's obviously one of the best playoff performers in the league. If he gets going, especially on that line with Ajo and everyone, look out because this team can definitely go on a run. But again, I I need to see it to believe it. 
Ajo, Gensel, and Jarvis will surprise people. If you're not familiar with the Hurricanes and you watch them in round one, that trio is great. Those three guys are all really good, and they're elevating each other because of how good they all are. Next up, Florida. They did it last year. I, I have proof. I know Florida can go on a deep and meaningful playoff run, and Sam Reinhart's playing better than he was last year. I know they're a little bit dinged up. I know Bob is a massive question mark, but if Bob's locked in, they're as good as anybody. And Kachuk and Barkov, I think this is the point I want to make on them. Of the eight, eight teams in the East that are going to make the playoffs, they might not be the best two stars, but they're certainly the gnarliest. Those are the two guys who, if the game is ugly and it comes down to a slog, they're the ones who are going to win the loose pucks in the corners. They're going to drive the net. They're going to be engaging after the whistle and engaging the other team, trying to bait them into stupid penalties. Those are the type of star players you need. We talk about it all the time in regards to the Lightning, where when you have a star player who's as good as Kucherov is, but he's also just a miserable person to play against, that's a really potent combination in the playoffs. You know what Barkov and Kachuk are? They're rats. Yeah. That's the way to describe them. They play like rats, and they make a lot of people mad, and they bait teams into taking penalties, and then the Panthers make you pay on the power play because they have one of the best power plays in the league overall. Sam Reinhart, especially with how good he's been on the man advantage yeah. this year. But I think, in my opinion, Florida is the deepest team in the Eastern Conference. So I, I forwards really, and defense, you're saying? Yeah, I, I do think Florida is the deepest team overall. I love their forward group. I love their defensive group. And if Bob is able to get back to the level that we saw from him in the playoffs last year, I think this team gets to the Stanley Cup final. Yeah, they're in a bit of a rut right now. They've lost eight of the last 10 games. But when they are humming on all cylinders, this is a team that can beat anyone. And I expect Kachuk and Barkov to be on their A game in the playoffs. With their depth, I think I can really see them winning it all this year. I think Florida has the highest ceiling of any team yeah. in the East. I feel like uh, I feel like Florida is the only team in the East that could hang with the West as far as like if you were to drop the Panthers into the Western Conference playoffs with Dallas and Colorado and Winnipeg and Vancouver and Vegas and Edmonton, they would be able to hang with those group, that group and it wouldn't really be a concern. Whereas the rest of the teams in the East, I just don't see it. Uh, next up, Tampa Bay. Uh, last dance. This is really kind of, Stamkos last year, the contract, I know they're going to figure it out and he's going to stay, but this is really it. They've put together a really nice stretch run here over the last month. Vasilevsky has started to look like himself again, but coming off of major back surgery, you're going to have question marks about a goalie, especially getting, he's not old, but he's getting up there as far as miles. You add up all those playoff games, but I think Tampa Bay is going to be a really hard out. I don't know how necessarily that they have the ceiling commiserate with a long playoff run, but they're miserable to play against and they're going to make you work for it. So you probably Tampa Bay probably has is the last team in the East that seriously can go all the way as far as this conversation, but they're not going to be an easy out. I agree. And Tampa Bay is also humming at the right time. Nick. Yeah. They've won eight of their last 10 games, 91 points, four points out of third in the Atlantic. It would be something if they slid into that number three spot and we got a battle of Florida to start things off in the playoffs. Again, I mean, yeah. That, that would be a lot of fun. But when I look at Tampa Bay, when Kucherov is on, man, I mean, there's not five better players in the league nope. than him. And I could probably trim that number even more with the season that he's had so far. And with Vasilevsky, he can also turn it on at any time. I know he's not the Vasilevsky that we've seen in years past, but this is still one of the three or four best goaltenders in the league. And in a small sample size, it is a playoff series. All you need is a hot goalie. And I think they are going to make things a living hell for whoever they draw. If they get Boston, I actually might pick Tampa to win that series with the level that Tampa is playing at right now. And even if they get New York, Nick, say, for example, a team passes New York and the Rangers kind of go down a little bit in the standings and they don't get the number one seed in the East. I think Tampa Bay could give New York quite a fight, and I think they could potentially beat them in round one. That's that is, I think, the team that no one wants to face in round one as a wild card team. All right, so let's lump Philly and Washington together so we can get out of here timely for the end of this vibes, season. vibes, vibes for both of them. Yeah, it's really straightforward. Nobody believes in either of them. Spite is a very powerful motivator if you're a professional athlete, and it's not impossible. We have seen weird teams go on long, miraculous playoff runs. 
Look at the Vegas team the first year of their expansion existence. Seattle beat Colorado last year in the first round. Buddy, the Montreal Canadiens just went to the Stanley Cup final. Yeah, a Canadiens team that had one star player and it was their goalie who hasn't played hockey since. So it, it's very, very interesting. Anything is possible. And we will be right back to talk about the Western Conference contenders. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar transfer in other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription of fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires for Robinhood gold for one year from the from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA is available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker dealer. And as we wrap up today's edition of the Locked On NHL Power Rankings, want to thank everybody who's still with us in the Western Conference. I can make an argument for seven of the eight teams that are in a playoff spot to go all the way. And I don't think it's that ridiculous. Like, yeah, Edmonton's goaltending worries me. Yeah, Vegas's health worries me. Yeah, the Kings' lack of high-end talent worries me. But it's going to be a battle of attrition out there. So starting at the top, the Stars, I think they're the deepest team in the entire league. Not just the West. Not th They are the deepest team in the entire league. When you're able to add guys like Logan Stankovin, with a month to go into the season and they acclimate from the AHL right away. They finally got Miro Heiskin and a partner good enough to play with him and Thomas Harley. And they're going to reduce Ryan Suter's workload where Ryan Suter, like, I don't want to say he single-handedly tanked their playoff series last year, but he pretty close to tank their playoff series last year that got them eliminated. If Ottinger can be league average, they can go all the way. All he's oh, got to do is, all he's got to do is do what Darcy Kemper did two years ago when the Avs won the Cup, and the Stars can I, – I don't want to say coast, but the Stars are the best team in the league. I definitely – I had it written down on my notes. This team is by far the deepest team in the Western Conference. You can easily make an argument for the deepest team in the league. I just love how the Stars are built. You have that young talent up front with Hintz, Robertson, you have – Johnston, of course, as well. But then you have some of the older guys. Jamie Benn is still kicking totally fine. Tyler Sagan, the ageless wonder, Joe Pavelski, who is tremendous. This team is so much fun to watch. Again, I thought last year's Stars team was great. This team it's is better. better. And they should go pretty far, I think, in the playoffs if everyone is firing on all cylinders. I know I probably said that for quite a few teams, but if they can get the contributions from everyone in their lineup, they're going to be a really hard out. I just need a Dallas-Colorado series. I think whoever wins that series might go to the final. I think those are the two best teams in the West when we talk about it, and we'll get to Colorado yeah. in a second. Uh, next up is Vancouver. I think a little bit of new team naivety. I think that plays a factor. We're a team that hasn't been to the playoffs for a while. They kind of don't realize how hard it is to win in the playoffs. Think uh, Carolina that first year under Rod Brindamore where they went to the conference final. Think the Rangers two years ago where they went to the conference final. Think Vegas their first year they went to the final. Seattle last year, you know, that's a real thing. And Vancouver's high-end talent, it's as good as anybody's. You know, Pedersen is one of the 10 best players in the world. Quinn Hughes is going to win the Norris. If Demko is healthy, he's one of the five best goalies in the league this season. That's a really good group. The only real question you have is their depth. Their bottom six is not great. And once you get past Ronick and Hughes, that defense leaves a little bit to be desired. Agreed. I think if Vancouver's high-end talent goes on a bunch of heaters, I don't know. It's going to be hard for them to lose four out of seven games. I do think Dallas 
when they're firing on all cylinders can beat them in a series or Colorado. But outside of that, I struggle to see a team, maybe Vegas, I think could be there as well, that could beat this team when Vancouver's core guys are all going strong. And especially if they go on a PDO bender like they were at the beginning of the season, Nick, good luck because they were finishing every single chance through the first month or two of the season. That that can happen in a seven-game series. Small sample sizes are very fickle. So yeah. I'm curious to see what happens for the Canucks in the playoffs. You said it best about their depth. I don't like it. I mean, it's fine when you look at other playoff teams, but it, they're not deeper than, say, Dallas or Colorado or even Vegas when they're fully healthy. But I'm just excited that we get to watch Quinn Hughes, Pedersen, Besser, Miller, and all those guys in a playoff series because I've been watching a lot of Canucks games this season, and they're a joy to watch. So yeah. whoever they draw in the first round is going to be a lot of fun. We could get great theater if they play someone like, I don't know, potentially Vegas in the first round. That would be a crap ton of fun. Or even just LA, Nashville, whoever. I, I'm really excited to see the Canucks overall. But I do think what has me excited about them, their core group of guys and Demko, because we've seen him turn it on in the playoffs before. That series against the Golden Knights during the shortened season was a sight to behold. That was one of the best goaltending performances I've seen in a seven-game series. And I, even though they lost, he was tremendous. He gets to that gets to that level. Excuse me, they'll be hard to beat. Uh, Colorado, they've done it before. They're high end guys. They probably have the best big three of any team in the entire league. When you do McKinnon, McCarr, Rantanen, I don't think there's another team that can do better than that. Uh, Georgiev doesn't inspire a ton of confidence, but they made some interesting moves. Casey Middlestat has fit in very well for them since acquiring them. I think Colorado's right there. I, I, it would be very, very easy to pick Colorado to go all the way, and it wouldn't take a lot to go right for them. There and McKinnon's playing like he's the best player in the world, even though even though McDavid's better, and we're going to get to Edmonton later. McKinnon's playing like he's the best player in the world right now. So you got that going for you. That group has gone to the playoffs and won a Stanley Cup before, so you have proof of concept. Just got to do it. They are just behind Dallas for one of the deepest teams in the Western Conference. I think they're the second deepest team in the conference, and you can make an argument that they are the deepest team in the league. When McKinnon is going, no one can stop him. And when they're fully healthy, they're going to be really hard to stop. It's going to take a lot for me to pick against Colorado if they do play Dallas, because that series is the total classic coin flip. Right, because you can see either of those two teams winning it. But I'll keep saying it. I said this on the show a lot these last few weeks, Nick. They get Landeskog back at some point. Look out, my friend. I know he hasn't played a lot of hockey recently. He's been banged up. They get him back. Man, that they're going to be a sexy pick to win it all. And if Georgiev just gives them average goaltending, they should be totally fine. All right. Next up, Winnipeg, and we do got to go a little bit faster. Uh, they got the best goalie in the world at the moment. They've got the deepest forward group they've had in a couple of seasons. Tyler Toffoli's fit in pretty well. Sean Monahan got off to a nice start there, but has cooled off since arriving. The only real question is their defense, the depth there. But this team, I think Hellebuck playing as well as he is, gives them the, the ability to hang with anybody, even though they're going to come up against teams with more talent than them. It's not a huge gap between them and Vancouver, Colorado, Dallas. But Hellebuck is good enough to keep that gap close. Yeah. Hellebuck is the biggest reason why I have confidence in the Jets playing like the best goaltender in the world. You already brought up their forward depth. Ehlers, I mean, Monaghan has been a really good addition to, for them. Shifley's been great this year. Kyle Connor obviously needs no introduction. I loved the Toffoli move for them at the trade. And they think Gabe Velarde is going to be able to come back for the playoffs too, which helps. Yes, I, I agree with that. And for the Jets... It's kind of like the Hurricanes in a way, too. I want to see it to believe it. They had a really ugly series against the Golden Knights last year in the playoffs. Rick Bonus was, quote-unquote, disgusted with the way his team played. I know their draw is going to be really hard to start out because they're going to be in that 2-3 matchup in the Central, but they can win that series if Hellebuck plays his A game and their forwards contribute on a nightly basis. They just can't have their top guys be shut down. You can probably say that for almost any other team that has star players, but if Hellebuck is below average it's going to be a really hard series for the jets to win i just want to see it to believe it because i do really like this jets team edmonton uh the high-end talent is as good as anybody in the world 
Bouchard having a breakout season on the back end helps a lot. Uh, that's really all I got. That defense, other than Bouchard, is a massive question mark. And their depth, you know, Evander Kane and Corey Perry aren't exactly Blake Coleman and Yanni Gord. Their high-end guys can hang with anybody. They They will have the ability to score. It's just a matter of if they can score enough. Do I need to say it? When Connor McDavid is on, there is no player that can stop him. He's the best player in hockey. Leon Dreisaitl is also a top 10 player in the role. You can easily make an argument for top five. If they take over a series, it's game over, Nick. I'm sorry. It really is game over for the most part. We've seen Dreisaitl do it on one leg against the Kings two years ago. With one leg, he had, I want to say, 12 points in a seven-game series with a a torn ACL. Just one of the best players in the world doesn't get enough credit. Uh, Next up, Vegas. If they're healthy insanely high ceiling insanely high ceiling when you're gonna have guys like mantha on your your third line on some nights that's as deep a team as there is they've got one of the best coaches in the world aiden hill has shown you the ability to be a good playoff goalie they've got more than enough talent it's just a matter of if they get healthy if mark stone is able to come back when he's able to come back and then it's just a matter of playing the games they got as much talent as anybody Health, that's the biggest thing for me with the Knights. You said it. If they're fully healthy, this team can definitely go all the way in the Western Conference and then go all the way to the Stanley Cup Final and go back-to-back. If they do get that psychopath back, Mark Stone, because he is a total animal on the ice and I love watching him, they are going to be a very tough out once again. That's the team that really matches up really bad for the Oilers in particular because they can shut down McDavid and Dreisaitl. I do think for McDavid and Dreisaitl, when they turn it on, they can beat most teams in the conference. It should be game over against the Knights. It can be a bit harder just because of the way they play in their own zone. I should say for Edmonton as well, Nick, just to fully wrap that up. Stuart Skinner, if, if he plays well above average, they'll be a tough out. Uh, Nashville, Vibes, and the hot goalie. If Soros gets going, we've seen it before. All it takes is a goalie getting hot, and you can exceed expectations. Nashville has exceeded expectations all year they've gotten great performances out of a 35 year old ryan mcdonough i think ryan o'reilly's 34 now great performances from those guys forsberg good as always roman yossi good as always they'll hang around i i don't think they can make anything crazy happen but we've seen weirder things we have seen less talented teams go on deeper runs agreed i don't think they'll win around in the playoffs but i think they're gonna make things scary for whoever they play in the Western Conference. You brought up Forsberg. He's one of the top goal scorers in the league. Roman Yossi is one of the five best defensemen on the planet. They have a couple of superstars at each position. And with Ryan O'Reilly, he knows what it takes, Nick, to win in the playoffs. You're going to get a high level of play from O'Reilly, even though he's in his mid-30s now. And with Saros, one of the three to five best goaltenders on the planet, he can turn it on at any time. It's like I said it earlier on the show. All you need at times is is a hot goalie. And if he turns it on, it could get scary for the Predators really quick for whoever they're playing against. So again, do I expect them to win a round? Probably not right now, but it wouldn't surprise me if they did, if they get the right matchup. Last but not least, LA. Uh, deep. They don't have a ton of high-end talent, but their forward group is reasonably deep. There's room for improvement from a couple of guys. Maybe Byfeld goes crazy, has a blossoming moment where he really impresses. Maybe Dubois wakes up. Uh, they've got a couple of guys like Kopitar and Dowdy who have the playoff experience. Cam Talbot has played better over the last month. I think their style, if they slow a game down and really muck it up, I think they have the ability to go deep in the playoffs. They just got to do it. They got to go out and execute their system. They're good at slowing games down and bringing them down to a halt. But you do have to eventually score, which has been the issue for the Kings in the postseason. They kind of remind me a little bit of the 2017 Senators, Nick, but they have more talent overall. They, they play that same 1-3-1 in a way. Yeah. And I know it's super boring to watch, my friends. It's not the running gun Colorado Avalanche or even the Dallas Stars or even to a degree the New York Rangers or a couple other teams in the conference like the Panthers, but it's still an effective system for them and it's worked throughout the year and it's why they are more than likely going to make the playoffs in the next couple of weeks. With the Kings, again, I think they can give a team a scare in the first round, but they still overall don't fully scare me when you look at the other teams in the conference. I think 
kind of for the most part, they're going to be happy to be there. I mean, you already said at Kopitar and Dowdy, they have the experience, but Byfield's been really great throughout this year. Kempe is one of their top goal scorers. You have Arvinson and Trevor Moore in their second line. I do want to see Dubois actually get back to the level that we've seen him play at at other points in his career. He has been a total non-factor for a good chunk of the season for the Kings, and that does need to change if they do want to go on a deep ride in the playoffs. And finally, I mean, this isn't even a strength, but their goaltending kind of scares me a little bit with Riddick and Talbot. If they can give them at least average goaltending, they can maybe make things interesting, but I just don't really know if that's going to be the case in the playoffs. And that'll just about do it for this week's edition of the Lockdown NHL Power Rankings. Make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. If you could be so kind, leave the show a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. If you are watching over on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, like the video. We'll see you guys next week. Final regular season episode next week.